All right, all right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, call to order of the ordinance work group, um, September 23rd. Uh, Liz, Liz Peterson, Ron Jodis, Tom Fitzgerald, Henry Mega, Mike Lydon, Bruce Elliott, Jackie Battos. I got everybody, I think, right? Everybody. So thank you guys um, for joining. Uh, so I think four, four things have occurred since our last meeting. Um, and, and I will go in reverse order for, uh, from the how things are laid out in the agenda. Um, Tom, I believe that uh, Bruce's long awaited questions uh, have been, um, and, and, and some of the, a number of the other groups questions um, have been weighed in on by uh, our town council. Is that correct? We've got the letter there. Yep. Uh, that is correct. And in, in addition, I also, that's one of the, one of the uh, four things that has occurred. I also believe that the latest draft ordinance uh, that includes the grammatical corrections and some of the, some of last meetings comments um, so have been also reviewed um, by the town attorney. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, okay. Reviewed. Some of them were reviewed also by uh, staff, um, like okay. Mike and I, as well. And and then the so and then the last thing um, I believe so the gram grammatical corrections the staff comments around and attorney comments around our last changes and overall changes, the letter of questions to be reviewed by the town council. And also, I believe the last thing that, is a, that occurred, and you can correct me here, is that Bruce's, um, I, I'll call it the Bruce letter, not that it's a, that's a um, I think it's a collaborative a number of questions in there ultimately became collaborative questions. Uh, were were there was was Bob V's comments relative to his responses, were some of those incorporated back into how he reviewed the overall document? Yeah, he uh, went like question by question. Um, and then some of them are in there. Um, some of them you'll see he left. It's kind of up to the committee to make the decision on that. Um, but he did add a couple of them and kind of suggested that, like, for one instance, like the affidavit, like, we don't need it. We can do, like, the signature line on the application instead type thing. He used those while reviewing the letter. I think Chris's question is whether he integrated his own suggestions in a further revision to the draft ordinance. Oh, um, I think those were the last round. This round, I believe, was your, uh, was just answering those questions that you had. Yeah, um, I think, that, I think that's right. And so the like, answer um, to Chris's question is no, he didn't. I'm sorry, guys. I, my, my, <laughs> I had a little technical problem there. <laughs> so what was... I appreciate it. I, I, so I missed the response and Bruce, you had a comment there. I, I was, well, Bob's letter stands alone and the draft ordinance is unchanged. Uh, I okay, mean, so it, I, well, it's all not my, been all my, revised. Okay, my question was in the sense that they were looked at it as reflective of each other. And, and so they stand independent, correct, but I think he would have incorporated any questions, any, any any changes he felt would have been relevant would have been incorporated in his changes if wrong. there was some concern in there. That's wrong, wrong. He didn't incorporate them. So well, he okay, didn't I, I, specifically send back the, the ordinance and like say, delete this, delete this. He sent the things back and then we kind of went through in that draft 10 that was sent out in the packet um, and kind of updated it. So you'll see like, um, section 4A2E, the signed affidavit, we deleted it and put in brackets, it'll be added as a separate signature line. The mm -hmm. insurance question you had, we put in an F saying, we'll insert the, the language that Kerma sends us. Um, so he didn't specifically oh. send back a new version of the ordinance right. with red line and blue font. We took that and we took that letter and incorporated it ourselves. 
Okay, so going back to my statement, Bruce, I don't think I'm wrong. I'm thinking I'm, what my point was saying is, is that if there were changes to be incurred that he felt would be inappropriate is in responding to the questions posed, I think he would have made them. If he didn't, the fact that he didn't make them doesn't make, does not prove the statement wrong that he, if that he was looking at them reflectively alongside each other, okay? The fact that there aren't changes in there doesn't mean that that is not the way that he proceeded. So as the ordinance is written now, does anybody have any further comments? Yes, I have several. The first is that at our last meeting on August 6th, before that meeting ended, Chris, you said that Tom was going to take care of pursuing Bob. I mean, those weren't the words, but Bob for confirmation whether he had received the questions that I had raised in May Correct. and whether, whether he intended to respond to those questions and that we would have a response to those uh, queries of, of Bob before the next meeting was scheduled for our group. And so uh, the meeting schedule, as everybody knows, was tackled last week. And um, I mean, I, I didn't know what to expect because we had nothing from relative to Bob or a packet. And so what I'm getting at is I still have some questions as you would probably remember, I didn't get the packet for the August 6th meeting. So during that meeting, I didn't have the benefit of the draft at that time. So I, I have some additional concerns. They're not huge, but I think they're important. Some additional concerns that are associated with the draft document. And uh, I'd be happy to go through them real quick right now, but um, it, I, don't, I don't wanna pass by this opportunity to say, you know, once more, no, I, I'm not done. I, you know, in May, I thought I was done with those five questions, but as time's gone along and there's been various changes to the document, yeah, I have a couple more things I want to raise. Well, go ahead, Bruce. We have well, Tom which, and Mike okay. and Henry. This is minor, but because I don't want to go through punctuation and spelling and stuff. I, I you know, that's not me, but uh, the fourth line of the draft that I have, this is the one that came, you know, in the packet. On the fourth line of the very first paragraph, it has the word insure. And this is the only thing I'm gonna point out about spelling, because this isn't spelling, this is the wrong word. I-N-S-U-R-E is not the word, the word is E-N-S-U-R-E. They're different words. So, they are? Yes. Uh, uh, with an I, it has to do with shifting financial risk. And the word E is a different word. That means to, um, as in, as in is suggested here, it has to do with like securing compliance as, as you know, as a cinema. But where is that again? I'm sorry. Can you tell me where that is? Line number four. Four. Page one. Okay. Fourth line. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're right. It should be and, unsure. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have this sort of ongoing, in my mind, our unresolved question of whether, uh, when we look at definitions and we have the definition of owner occupied there and we have the definition of primary residence, um, I think it came up before and it just sort of hung and we moved on. But if the, the mechanism that we're, we're prescribing here, it enables the owner to make a decision as to whether they want to be present or not. They don't have to be. They don't have to be there. They can appoint, they can rely on their appointed um, agent to cover during periods of absence. And if they're mm -hmm. going to be able to, re they, they're compelled to designate an agent. And if they are not present, uh, that agent is then responsible. But my point is just, we don't need to get into what's owner occupied mean. What does primary residence mean? Primary residence doesn't mean anything in, in our configuration of the regulation. If we're not gonna require that the owner be there. Okay, that was, that was brought up and it was going to be removed. And that was part of my comments on August right. 7th that I sent in. And I don't, I don't see those changes made either, so. 
So that's, I think that still needs to be resolved. Are, are, I, the, the underlying issue is, are we all clear? Do we have a meeting of the minds that we're not going to require owner occupied, you know, an owner to be on the premises when there is a, you know, a tenant in the short term rental unit? That's my understanding. Yeah. That was not mine. You thought they had to actually be in there sleeping in the place at the same time? Is that your understanding? Or on the premises. So we have some that have a separate a separate unit. Well, it sounds you're but you're referring to a detached unit, a detached accessory dwelling unit. And so they're not sleeping in the same building, but they're on the property. And that you know, that's what my, I my under you know my my under my not my understanding. My intent was that in each and every it's not I don't think it's feasible in each and every event that may occur that the owner be on premise for the for each in each and every period that a person is renting their home. That was not, that's not, I don't know that that's, that's not my intent. My intent was that the, these, the res, the, the building that the individual is renting out is, is the owner occupied dwelling. Is it, it they are the occupant of that dwelling in some fashion. I thought we'd moved on from that, that we weren't requiring it to be their primary residence. That's not, yeah, it's not primary. I'm not just, I'm just saying, uh, -oh to be okay. a, just to be a property that they owned that they resided in but not necessarily their primary well the, but the i don't think it's go ahead the residing part you don't i don't i'm not following on that you could own it and never reside in it well that's you know here we'll come back to that but first is okay. i don't think we're clear on whether we're requiring the owner to be present on that property when there's a tenant there as a short-term rental, we, we, we stay the, in, and and we're recognizing that if there's an emergency, or right, you know, but we're we're saying that they can only rent, you know, a uh, hundred days in a six-month period. I Bruce, guess my thought would have just been, I mean, in a twelve-month period. My Bruce, thought Thomas, been, I answer you. So in section four, letter F, we say. Number one, the owner of a property has the option of being present while renting their property. That's what's or written there, Tom. I got on, so. that. I've read it several times. I've got that. I, I still stand by my statement. I don't think the six of us are on the same wavelength there. We don't have to be, though. This, not a, this or, an ordinance does not have to be written the unanimous participant. You're unanimous to give the participants of the of the of the the working group. They just try to put forward a document that has enough structure to accomplish what the intent and the desire is of those who formed it, but it's not going to be, it, it, again, and that's why it's pliable and can be adjusted moving forward. But there's nothing that requires us to be in unanimous agreement. I don't think Bruce is saying he's looking for agreement. I think he's making sure we all understand that that's what it is. That there is a well, unanimous agreement that we're not all on the same wavelength. And if that's the way we want to go forward, well, okay. Um, I'm not going to debate that. There's things on well, here I don't agree. Yeah. There's things on here I don't agree with at all, but it's not that, but I understand them. Is that what you're saying, Bruce? I that, do I understand it correctly? You're saying you think that not everybody understands that that's what it says? Well, I, I think that the, the language of our, of our document, whereas, mm -hmm. You know, as Ron's pointing out, it's owner occupied and primary residence. We don't need those definitions. They don't mean anything. They're not yeah. elements of our of our document. Our document. Well, owner occupied shouldn't appear anywhere, actually. Right. right. And primary residence. Well, so, there's no need for that to yeah. appear anywhere. Uh, and so, so it's misleading. The owner occupied. The owner occupied definition is there because later on we say you can be. Like it's an option, so we have to define what it is when we mention it later. And the same thing with, and we can delete it, but we do mention primary residence in section 4A2A, 
on the application, we say a list of all owners and primary residents of the property and their contact information. So because we mentioned it there, we have to define what that is in the definition section. Well, we could drop it in both places. I mean, it doesn't mean anything. There's no essential importance attached to primary residence, just a term. And okay. So well, I think you're right. I think even knowing the residence isn't even required either. Well, um, even owning, owning it? No, the owners, yes, but not the residents. Like you're asking for registration of every person who lives in the house. Good point. I had not thought that far ahead. Yeah. But, uh, well, I'm just saying, I think we're putting a lot of extra work in here that mucks it up that you don't need. It's almost like that's what they do in like European countries. You must register the people of the home. No, we just need to know who the owner is, right? I mean, and who to call. So what we're trying to, right? I mean, what, what, right? what, what we're trying, I think what, the, if we go back to, if we go back to some of the initial comments of why the group was formed, mm. uh, the, the overarching tenets were, were responsive, res, responsive ownership, responsible ownership of a, of a property, safe operation of a property, Intent to intent to maintain the harmony and understanding of resident residential experience for those around uh, those uh, those abutting property home, uh, homeowners, and also one of my one of what I was looking to bring into the fold and have a conversation around was to avoid short-term rentals, the, the proliferation of short-term rentals in our town as it relates to an economic engine. And the way that we would go about doing, the way that I would go about doing that, pardon me, not to say you would go about doing that, was to limit the uh, limit the attractiveness of someone buying multiple properties in town with the intent to rent them frequently and not be a participant and an owner in that and be not be an active participant in owner of that property someone simply being a landlord which is not what i which is not what i would like to see proliferate in town so with, I'm asking, I'm not asking for anyone's agreement around that last statement or that last concern. Again, that last concern being the, to, per, to, to curtail the interest of someone buying multiple properties with the interest simply of just being a landlord within as many rental nights as they can. So if that was what I was looking for, and I'm not looking for anyone to agree with that, but I'm looking for someone to say, okay, this, we might, you might solve for that by putting language in that required the owner of that property to, to either to be whom or on premise when what would how would you solve for that how would you put language in that that think, solve for that i think with 100 days you're you're 30 percent yeah. utilization i mean that that's it right there by making people have to be their primary residence or be on site i think that was a discussion we had early on that that would really kill a lot of these ability at all for anybody to do that so you so it would kill the the economic viability ron to a certain extent what you're saying of someone coming in and buying multiple properties is that what you're saying by that yes the economic viability and even in the occurrence of these you'll just make it so difficult that you'll never see a short-term i mean if that's what you're trying to achieve then we'll just say the ordinance doesn't allow it and why go through these hoops and stuff to say make it so inconvenient that it's impossible. Just make it, just make it that you can't do it, period. We're done. Yeah, that's what they've know. done in my old hometown in California. They've just eliminated short-term rentals. Well, it's not what I'm, right. yeah. And, we had, and I had a, we had a discussion about that, about the different types of towns. And Simsbury is not a go-to destination where yeah. you're going to be dislodging the local residents mm -hmm. from their homes or their rental units. It, it's, uh, people come here occasionally, they're, Maybe it's a competition with the hotels. People come to, for their kids going to school. They want to 
um, visit them, that kind of stuff. They don't want to go to a hotel. Um, it's a totally different environment than yeah. a like ski town. Right. Or, we, we, or we beach town to, or Los Angeles. Yeah. So we wanted to, so, so we wanted to, so like not we, I went into this with that premise. So to disincent that potent, the potential occurrence of the proliferation of, of rental units, but also to allow for an incent homeowners in town, responsible homeowners in town who have the opportunity to use their home, their residence as a economic opportunity, income generator for themselves uh, in a safe, responsible, and to, to assume it's in the right zone correctly and meets all of Henry's concerns that allows for that. So how do we, how do using, so how do you blend, how do you ensure that both of those, not ensure, into E and S-U-R-E? It works if you have a place that you can occupy and have an area that you will want renters in while you're living in your house, that this ordinance will fit that if you're going to put those owner occupied things in there. But if like to Liz's uh, comment earlier that if you ended up with a house through, um, you know, parents died and you are now in the hair of the house, or mm -hmm. whatever reason you have the house, this makes it very unattractive to make it a primarily short term rental uh, house because it's only 100 days. You're really going to have to make it long term and maybe 100 days will fill in some places where you, you're absent of long-term rentals. So it's kind of a, to my, my mind, be fill in the gap kind of thing until you've got a long-term renter in there or you just sell the house. Cause it's, cause at hundred days is if you were going to be owning properties for short-term rental purposes, it's, it's not viable. So. Okay. So no, so we keep the owner occupied language, but we don't state primary residence. I thought we, we wouldn't keep either one because you don't right. have to be on on your well, there, uh, you be, oh yeah I, I what my my I think it it's not they're not it's it's be very difficult to have them both be to work together correct so I'm just trying to say if there's one or the other or is it not you, the group was saying you don't need any of them I, that oh, so I'll stop there all right so Bruce the what is the proper so Tom, where would the reflect where would the language be correct in as it's adopted now or previously adopted and then we 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 removed it or previously suggested, excuse me, and then we removed it to indicate ownership of the property that creates a level of responsibility that that, that brings to the spirit of the document a level of accountability and responsibility to the town, to the residents around it, and to the safety of the individuals who are renting from it. Like where in the document do we have that? I, either or either language that previously would have been incepted or somebody else, Jack, somebody help. Because what I want to encourage, yeah. what you know, Here, we, I can, we I need can to help you, Chris. Yeah. The, the first, time or two the first time when we started looking at a draft document this committee was looking at draft the draft document was written to require uh primary residence and you know owner occupied those were in there and then after a subsequent meeting the draft document was changed to reverse that or to, to alter that requirement so that as ron is saying you know if you want to create a business opportunity for the community um Owner occupied is not friendly to that, nor is the uh, uh, the other provision. So, you know, what's our strategy here? We're trying to create a business opportunity as they do not want where Liz used to live. And, um, you know, I guess I, I was, uh, my leaning was towards the original provisions, but I understand the interest of potentially uh, the business community, although it might be a fairly small niche in the business community that would want to get involved in this 
partly because there's a lot of responsibility and activity with these short-term rentals with people coming and going, reservations, billing, um, yada, yada. And if you're dealing with a third party entity, VRBO or one of them, you got even more stuff. So I, I don't know how much business opportunity it really generates, you know, in the, the non-owner occupied. Is that really a significant segment? I understand what Ron's trying to represent that concern and um, I get it. I, I don't know how important it is. I, I'm willing to sort of pass that along, but I, I just, I, I'm belaboring this, but I thought it was evident to me that the six people on this commission didn't have a common understanding of what we were putting forward here. And I'm not 100% sure we do now, but you're, Chris, you're looking for a reversion back to the way the thing was originally written and presented. Chris, this is the first time I've heard you uh, mention these factors that you wanted in, the, in this uh, ordinance. Well, because what I'm trying mm -hmm. to do is not put my, I'm trying to let it shape itself and not put my own personal perspective into it. And, but this is the conversations that have taken place yeah. from, from this group. These are the themes that have taken place in this group. And this is what occurred. And this is where this was the experience that I had by being approached by certain residents of the town yeah. of concerns they had. But that wasn't my place to put them in because I'm trying to put in a, I'm trying to put, excuse me, I'm not saying I. Collectively, the, the intent is to try to put through, forth a non-emotional working document that blends as much of what we have for personal perspective with practical perspective with what is efficient as well. So I think you need to uh, add reasonableness too. It, it, all those objectives are fair, Liz. That's it's a fair objective. Uh, uh, so the let's do this. Let's take a different tack here. Putting that aside, putting the issue that we just spent the last fifteen minutes discussing. Move forward with your list, Bruce. Okay. Really, then the. The only other thing that I think is really important, we need a few minutes, a minute or two, maybe. In um, paragraph C, let me see, what section is it? Section four, paragraph C. This goes to that limitation of uh, 100 days um, in a year, 100 days of rental in a year. Um, when we first wrote this standard, the period of the license, the period of the permit was a year. We subsequently changed that to two years. And let me do, just blurting this out. I think what this needs to say, this is paragraph C, I, I, item one, Roman numeral one. Um, the 100 days during any one year period, the any one year period, um, that lends itself to the argument it could be, you know, from the sixth month to the 18th month, 18th month of yeah. the, and what we need this to say is that it's 100 days um, in the first 12 months, 100 days in the second 12 months, words to that effect. You know, 100 days by the first anniversary, and then 100 days additional. You know, in that second year, so we can fiddle around with the words, but it it needs to be clear that we're not we will not accept. You know, if somebody says, oh, I didn't rent my place for the first seven months, so that doesn't count. My 12 months starts. No, the 12 months need to be better defined in my mind. And, and using the first 12 months and the second 12 months, that does it. Yeah, and if it's a calendar, calendar year, we brought this up, like say July 1st is the date. They could have the 100 days on either side of July 1st, right? <laughs> well... We, I oh, brought that up months ago, right? Yeah. So I think, you know, um, another um, look at I'm in here? Um, because I think this was reviewed by staff and this was changed. Well, I don't, yeah, that's, it doesn't, I don't, add, I don't want to pick the source, on. but I think what's there is there. Well, Bruce, let's let Tom chime in. I mean, we added the, we had the two year, uh, permit. I, 
I don't. I mean, we can audit the wording. It's blue font, so it's new from it's a certain it time. So, what would you you would like it to say? Any twelve month period? No, no. Uh, it should say under the permit for more than one hundred. No owner can rent for under the permit for more than one hundred days during the first twelve months of the permit period. And during the second 12 months of the permit period, 100 days of rental are available. 12 month period of the, yeah. of the two year permit. Right, because it's a two year permit. But so when we talk about a year, it's the first year. It's not, that doesn't mean it's a calendar year, it just means the first 12 month anniversary. Um, and then this, you know, and, and again, my, I'm being redundant here, but then we need to say it's a different 100 days. It's an additional 100 days. Um, it's a separate period, that second 12-month period. No more than 100 okay. days for each 12-month period of the two-year permit. That's what you're saying. No, I'm saying we, to avoid that debate about What's which 12 month period? Because we don't want these things overlapping. You get a hundred, you get 12 months to use up your hundred days and you lose them if you don't. Right, right. Um, per, that's what I'm saying. Per each 12 month period. I thought we had already, I thought 12. this already been solved for. Yeah. Well, like, read it. Does it look like it's that, solved to you? That, 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 that language. Doesn't look like <laughs> that, that, that language, your, your language right now, that covers it, Bruce. 100 days per any one one year period of the short term rental permit I, I that would cover it i don't think that needs to be changed yeah. what do, do, do we need to worry about the impact if somebody gets the gets it they wait till the end of the first year do their 100 days and then do the next 100 days right at the start of the next year of their permit so in a, it could be 200 days in a calendar year but it's only a hundred days in a permit year. Right. Does that matter? Yeah, I don't, I don't think you can avoid that. I can't, I, I don't know, we can legislate. You can. you can, you just say that okay. it's it's a hundred days between the issuance date and the first 12 month anniversary. And then there's a hundred more days that recognize that second year. So you could say it's following the first anniversary yeah, and the yeah. end of the permit, there's another 100 days. It would only happen the first I think it needs some more attention. And yeah. if we're in agreement, it could be clearer than what Tom can and Mike can work on that, or I'll send something in, I guess. <laughs> but I think it should be clear because it, it begs to, you know, the argument down the road. And our planning director uh, is going to be in the middle of the argument and, and, and it's just, it's human nature and wanting to cooperate so, and be supportive. Can this be done by, have the clearest language on, the, to stand on the application permit form, we can just put period, year one period, July 1 to June 30th, 2022. Year two period, July 1, 2023, or 20, July 1 to June 30th, 2023. You get 100 days in each of those periods. It can be done on the permit form and not in the ordinance because that any one year period can stay. And if we define the period on the permit form, you're good. You're gonna put the dates on the period form. That's what you're suggesting. Yeah, on the, on the yeah. application, okay. we can put your two year period is this date to this date and this date to this date. Yeah. But I, I, don't, okay. I don't think that that, that so that, that approach, none of these approaches, none of these approaches uh, prevent if I'm interpreting you correctly and I'm time boxing it, none of them prevent Liz's no. occurrence, but I don't, but we're to, to, again, to legislate to something that is in, incredibly minor, I don't, I don't well, think it would only be the first that. year anyway. It would only be the first year. Yeah, right? I don't want to stop because it could happen. I, I, For the first I, two I, years and it couldn't happen again. But that's okay. That's their yeah. 100 day. I think that's fine. Yeah. 
If we're worried about just, neighborhood impact or something, if that were to be the issue, it could it would only happen the first two years. After that, it it couldn't happen again, right? Well, the feasibility of someone pulling mm -hmm. that off is is pretty is is it's infinitesimal, um, I would think. Mm -hmm. So okay, Bruce. Mm -hmm. What's the, so uh, so you'll so Mike, you believe we've already have it solved for, and which is a provision of the the that's the position of town staff. Mm -hmm. Bruce, you disagree, and you want you want to you want it adjusted. So the way that the best, the most efficient way then, what's the most efficient way it hears? Bruce drafts his version and sends it, or we take another shot at town drafting something which Bruce doesn't agree with. Well, you, you made it clear, you know, half an hour ago, Chris, that you're not looking for agreement. You're just looking for a document we can hand off well, that would facilitate more discussion. I would, I'm, I mean, yeah, I, I'm, I appreciate you saying that. What I'm, what I'm, hoping that doesn't happen next next month's meeting is that we don't hear that someone didn't get questions answered or in time or whichever and that we've got to go through another list so right now i'm trying to go through all of your seemingly your issues which which we would potentially put out there and hopefully they're addressed and we don't have this problem and the next time we read it you're satisfied with um the position that's been taken. So we, we'll, let's move on to the next one then. Okay. I think Chris, that the best I feel like I feel Chris. I feel like you're accusing Bruce of being difficult, and I think he's just making sure he's covering everything. And he happens to be that one person in the group. And I feel like your wrath is being directed at him a bit. Yeah, but I, I don't wrath. mind this. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> well, I'm not. You know, Chris. You know, I'm not the least sensitive person there is, and you seem a little pissed. Well, you, you described yourself as, as how? I'm sorry, I missed that. No, I mean, I don't care, but I, I think it needs to be brought up that it, at many points in this process, you've been highly annoyed about, well, you know, Bruce, how Bruce is doing things. It's not cool. Okay, we're trying interesting to- ob Interesting observation. Anyways, um, yeah. so, so let's continue on, Bruce, with your-, your okay. Because again, I think the best way to proceed, the best way to have this process move efficiently, because again, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm identifying and noticing is that we've had multiple inefficiencies that have been identified by Bruce uh, coming into each meeting. So the one that I think the best way to solve this one would be for Bruce to present his recommendation as the wording uh, so that we don't have another debate whether it fits his, um, it fits the answers that he was seeking or the responses he was seeking. So I, I would appreciate if you could push that forward. Um, so what's the next comment that you had on there? Because I, well, the, these are all valuable. Well, the Chris, I don't, you know, I, I'm, I'm getting the feeling you didn't read De Crescenzo's letter yet, but sure I do. Um, I don't have a problem with. I don't have a problem okay. with. I, he responded to your dispute. Well, question number six. I don't. Question number six has to do with. He's suggesting, or some. I'm actually. I guess somebody on our side's the source of this, but it wasn't me. Accessory dwelling units, and in short, how how is our. Um, short-term rentals um, ordinance going to deal with, or is it going to deal with accessory dwelling units? And I know you've re mentioned on, on multiple occasions that you didn't want to get into accessory dwelling units because I'm the only one on the zoning commission and, and it's just too complicated or, you know, that's the sense of it. But I think, so, so you know, Bruce, it's, it's here that we need to have some sort of understanding because it's so, Mike, can feeling, you speak to that? You know why? Well, it's my it feeling was, that, you know, unless uh, there's real risk here that we're going to have spent, you know, I don't know, by the time we're done two years on this thing. And when you compare them to accessory, the ADU policy, I don't know why anyone would do this because you're going to have to buy insurance. You're going to have the permits that expire. You have to, you know, um, a lot of layers and including the limited time that you can rent the place when if you just did an accessory dwelling unit uh, 
you don't have any of that. I mean, you do have the safety stuff, but it doesn't, this, the ADUs doesn't require a lot of what we're struggling to put into this. And in, and in fact, it just came to my attention this uh, last week, to my shame, that this summer the state legislature passed a bill that has as part of its intention to broaden what's available in terms of ADUs to promote uh, you know, affordable housing. It's in that genre of changes they were suggesting to promote affordable housing. And one of the things they're, they're doing is promoting increasing the minimum size to a thousand square feet. So there are some provisions of our current ADU that are gonna leave the town the responsibility to make a decision as to whether we accept the changes that are available through the new state law or we reject them, accept them or reject them. If we re receive them, if we, if we accept them, we're gonna have thousands, 1,000 square foot uh, ADUs and, and we're gonna be limiting our short-term rentals to 600. Um, you know, we might consider, well, no, I don't wanna go, there, but I think we, we need to heed the, the suggestion from the attorney that uh, the proposed change is a policy decision to the committee. I just think we ought to have something clearer in this thing about how we look at ADU and, or not at all and just leave it to time to sort it out, <laughs> which could be problematic, but I don't know. So I think we, we would do better to have a more, a clearer statement about the connection between ADU and short-term rental. Even if it's to say there is no connection, one's an ordinance, one's a zoning regulation. I don't know. If, if no one else is concerned about this, let's just move on. Well, I think you know more about it than most people. That's why it makes well, sense. Mike. Think, right? Well, is, wasn't the whole issue for the ordinance, I think, about situations that actually weren't ADU type situations? They were literally party houses. Those weren't ADUs. That was like a whole house being taken over. No, no, Isn't that's, that make that's it a, different? Those were ADUs. No. See, ADUs have no limitation. They can be rented for one day or 360 days or forever, you know? Yeah, but I just don't think that those ADUs create the problems that this ordinance is brought about to solve, right? Is that a different, yeah, thing, a different, what, different way to so look the, at it? So the tact, again, the, the, I, I, I think that the tact that we had spoken to and what I have had in the back of, at least of the way I have approached and engaged this issue or Bruce's issue, or I think, uh, or um, notes, I think Ron brought this up as well. Um, Bruce, again, you're correct. The, the, there's no one better here to, to probably speak to it. But I think the overarching theme of the past is that because this issue is being taken up, taken up in other conversations, which are evolving conversations or which are in our undefined, und, undefined conversations, TBD, that us making a statement a, might be conflicting to those as they evolve down the in, down the road. So it's a bit of an imperfect situation, right? It, we we yes, have an it idea, is. we it have is. an idea. So then how, because again, I'm trying to move this process along because we, because we not collectively agree to, but I think there's enough thought provoking conversation for us to say, uh, we we see that there's that we 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 have we, we might create a problem for ourselves if we define something so stringently that may change down the road. How do we then? How do we how do we move past this at this point and draft this ordinance and push it forward? Because we could sit here waiting for something to occur that may not occur. Or we could put and we could enact something that is conflicting with what occurs down the road. So how do we move past? How, how do we uh, with how do we move then? How do we move on this? 
I think you have to kind of define what you want the outcome of this ordinance to be and then write language that backs that up. That's, I mean, that was kind of my comments. And if you go to that specific one, it, I think it's very contradictory what's in the ordinance right now. Only one portion of a residence or accessory dwelling unit can be used at a property. So, so what does that mean? You can only use, what's one portion of the, of the residence? One bedroom uh, or the accessory dwelling unit. So if you have a, a house with an accessory dwelling unit, you can't have one person come in there, one family and use both at the same time. It, it doesn't make sense to me. I think the thought was you only want one short term rental going on out of property per at a time. But the way this is written, one portion of a residence, it, I don't know what that means. In, uh, Ron, I can clarify that. That would mean either they can rent the house from the owner or they can rent the accessory dwelling unit. Why can't they, they rent can't. both? Why can't they? It's a short term rental. If, if it's one family and they want to use both, I don't see why they can't rent both. <laughs> I understand you didn't want two going on at the same time, but but this is this is saying no, you're only allowed to use one or the other. I don't know, or or one portion of the residence, not the whole residence, I guess. So the so what is 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 it in that instance then on the application is during the rental period. Does it, if there are two, if there are two possible, or if, if there are multiple possible rental uh, spaces, four bedrooms on a property. Yeah, uh, excuse me, then I'm just space. They, they, if they meet Henry's, the, so if there, if there are, if there are more than if there is more than one rentable space, uh, that it the application says only uh, allows for only one of those spaces to be one of those spaces to be taken uh, the space that's rentable to be taken by one renter during one period during one rental period i think that's what we were trying to achieve yeah but without having to be only occupied it, why couldn't it be the whole residence so that's why well, I, I think the whole residence if it's one house so if it's just the one living unit so you have 2000 square feet nobody's arguing with that that's one space that's one portion of the residence is the entire residence <laughs> it just doesn't it to me it's poorly worded okay well yeah but the concept is we can only regulate the shirt the the accessory dwelling unit or we can only res regulate the, the resident term rental unit. We can't regulate what they do with the rest of the house, other than that we can require that the owner be in the rest of the house, but we're inclined not to do that. And so the owner, if he doesn't have to be there, he can have anyone there he wants. So he can rent the rest of the house. The only thing we're controlling is these specific small 600 square foot spaces. So but a lot of these short-term rentals, and I think you were saying the same thing, you, you usually rent the whole house. No. You don't. Okay. They can, there's the ADU, because we've never had short-term rentals before, but an ADU is the same set 600 square feet. But like you said, VRBO, whatever, or people tend to rent the entire house. They don't want the homeowner there. They're more inclined to rent it if it's the homeowner isn't there. I've, I've done both, and I like it. Did I, did I yeah, I like but, did I hear did, did I hear someone raise did I hear someone raise not a concern it's the inflection of the of how it was presented but the possibility that multiple rentals may take place at the same time I think because, that's trying to eliminate which I would correct agree with that okay well excuse me not to say correct I guess right so does which is I think is which is which was which is uh, a spear that, that that is a common theme that I think we as a group agree to. Is that fair? I would so I'm agreeing with it. I don't know about others. But. Yeah. Okay. So so, so one so contracting then, party plus the owner for one of the small for either an ADO uh, or. All right, that's STR. Yeah. Okay. 
so then so, so then does the does the language so then can we does the language solve for that mike does it ensure that that would happen in your view well i mean yeah you're saying you get one one short term rental per per property so whether they get they're just renting a bedroom from the homeowner which will get to Ron's comment about the portion, whether they're renting an accessory dwelling unit, the dwelling from the unit. homeowner, yeah. or the whole the, the entire whole house. It's right? still that one permit, and, and you know we, we, the the key also is that one permit, and meeting the other requirements: sleeping area, bathrooms, etc. That's 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 the other thing that's going to drive whether someone's going to get a permit or not. You know the yeah. sanitary and safety issues that are associated with it. Okay, so then I'm going back to the going back to the original concern. I think I'm comfortable the way I, I, I would interpret that. That I'm com I'm comfortable with the language as it is. S states that and we've, but Bruce, you have it. You you, you no, oh, actually, now that we've talked in that circle. Yeah. No, what I was going to get at was just that. From the get-go, my, my concern has been to try to take a position that says a homeowner can have a short-term rental unit if they abide by the permit requirements, or they can have an ADU. But they can't have an ADU and a short-term rental in the same property. Because then they'll be renting them at the same time, and you you get the neighbor's well, concern that they don't want to be living in a multifamily but, it, but an eight, but uh, okay, go ahead, Tom. No, Mike. Well, Bruce, Bruce actually no. brings up a good point. It's, it's how do you handle the situations where you have a house that someone says they want it rent out for short term rentals, but then you also have an accessory dwelling unit that you have mm -hmm. a long term tenant there. Mm -hmm. Now you're creating a situation where you have short term tenants in the house, long term tenants in, in the accessory dwelling unit. Mm -hmm. So you have two rental units going on, which mm -hmm. I from agree. From a neighborhood perspective, they may say, Hey, I bought a house in a single family uh, neighborhood, not a multifamily development. So maybe that that's something that could go into, <laughs> excuse, I'm sorry. And we'd have to, we'd have to probably assert it into one of the earlier sections. And if the commission, if the board, if the group said, listen, if you got an ADU and you're not, you're renting the ADU independent of your, your main house, you can't have both. You got to, you got to follow the zoning rules for the ADU. You live in the house. You don't rent the house out for short-term purposes. You can rent your ADU out. And obviously it's long-term, it's more than 30 days. So Bruce, is that what you're trying to hit on that point? Oh, but actually that's better, but you know, okay. you got the gist of it. That yes. Underlying all this, people say they did not buy a house in a multifamily um, zone. And it wasn't an accident. They don't want to be in. And so they say, I don't want this. I didn't buy it. I don't have all my money invested in this for that. And you know, yada yada. And and I understand it. I'm I'm I fully understand it. I'm I feel the same way to a certain extent. But um, if we have an opportunity here to they try to an, take an option away by having an ADU that you can rent and the permanent residence, you have a two family property. States basically said every yeah. property in the state is a two. I know that's why property. they don't favor having ADUs either. But mm -hmm. that, that option is gone. No People who so, okay, don't so, like ADUs are gonna hate this even worse if we have short term rentals and ADUs in the same property. Plus they could rent the balance of the building as an unregulated, you know, I mean. So can we fix this under Mike, um, under limit to amount of rentals and section, it's C, yeah. um, it's section II. And instead of saying only one rental permit is permitted per property, you would say only one short term rental unit is permitted per property. Well, and that's that a good point. Cool. That should yeah, be it, there too. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, should yeah. be there too. That should yeah. be clear. <clears throat> Jackie, I don't. The STR. So the, 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 the so again, going back, I think the challenge is that we, we, we know that a, no, we don't know, excuse me. I, ADU is going to be an ongoing conversation, but 
I don't know. It's for us to define what an ADU is. We we run it. We 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 would run a risk of trying to just officially define what an ADU is, uh, if that if it's likely that that definition is going to change down the road. But that, that but we can always change this. That's why an or, it's, it's an ordinance. It's but in the, the zoning regulations. Uh, to the point of, I think this is a really good point. I'm glad it's brought up, and I'm seeing it. I don't, Jackie. That so that your recommendation would i think that shouldn't i think it should stay in there the, the as it's don't adjust the language but i think there is merit to addressing that or, or an individual there's merit in addressing the fact that a property shouldn't have a long-term renter a rental scenario with a short-term rental opportunity as well i think there's merit in addressing that so is that is that something that the 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 just taking a straw poll not that we need to be in all in agreement but is that is that something that is shared as a concern from the group as a whole again having a person having full-time long-term rentals with the ability to add in short term as well on the property is that a concern for the group or not it's not a concern for me. I don't know about the group. If you had a long-term renter there, I don't see why the owner of the property wouldn't should be subjected to not allowing for short-term rental and the other portion. I think with the so if you have an ADU, Ron, and just I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm not trying to prove my point. I'm trying to illustrate my point, Ron. ADU long-term rental. So you have, so you have an ADU that's a long-term rental, and then the house becomes a short-term rental. That's, that's yeah. what I'm seeing. Yeah. I'm seeing happen. And so then the property for a period of time is entirely occupied by renters. And it continues to roll. Let's say Liz's illustration, which is seemingly not possible, I mean, seemingly has a low probability but it is a possibility where the property is just a full-time rental property. Well, they're limited to a hundred days. Well, true. Correct. So they so, have two full -time, and they could have full two, two full-time renters, one for the ADU, one for the house. Yeah. That's what, uh, that's, that to me personally is not, Again, low probability. And I, I said that we weren't going to legislate to particular properties or you know, unprobable. This is an unprobable scenario, but it's well, an interesting it's becoming scenario. increasingly probable with the changes coming from the state, though, isn't it? Yeah, and you're only allowing 100 days of short term rental. So I think an owner would want to push towards getting a full term rental. With only 100 days available, so you're gonna you could potentially end up with two full-term renters, ADU mm -hmm. plus the, the house. But there's nothing we can do about it. That's the state. The state is saying that's gonna happen. Well, that's your. Well, I just backing up momentarily. The it, it is a it's, it's our collective wisdom then that we're gonna apply the 29 day limit or the 100 day limit of the STR is gonna apply to ADUs in the future. Well, I thought the thing to say would be just say only one short term rental party can occupy the residence or the ADU at any given time. So they're only going to get 100 days and it can only be one party at a time. Maybe they're going to have a, a full time renter there and one of the others. But that way you don't have the possibility of two short term rental going on, one in the house and one in the ADU. So we are going to apply short term rental standards to the ADU. Unit right, but you, don't but I, but you don't have two different parties there, one in the ADU. You could have a long-term renter. Whoa. You can't stop that. So you're saying it's per address, not per unit then, right? Yeah, per address. Hmm. Hmm. That you would be more problematic because then, then if you had two short-term rentals going on, at, at parties going on at a given time, is that really one day's rent short-term rental or is that no, two no. or <laughs> then it gets complicated 
Mm. Okay. Um, wow. I realize it's nine o'clock. I have a concern about the notification zone. I wanted to get that in because this is up to the committee. I don't want to cut Bruce's list off, but. The 100 feet? Yeah, I think the lawyer responded that we can make it whatever we want, right? Yes, he did. I think it should be more than 100 feet. Do we, do we already have a, a neighbor notification? Like say when there's gonna be construction on a property, is there already a neighbor notification process and a zone for that? It's put out a sign and there, there, in some cases there need to be signs, but to my knowledge, and Mike can correct me, I don't think our zoning regulations have any, a word in there about notifying neighbors, you know, by so, yeah. but we do so require only... that they produce the names and the addresses. Their re applicants are required to deliver that information to the zoning commission, but no one's required to actually do anything with it. So, so the plan... <laughs> The planning, commission says, yeah. the planning commission requires 100 feet notifications through uh, certified mail. So does the historic district commission and conservation. I think it's 150 feet. Um, that's kind of that's the between 100 and 150 feet for certain for neighbor notifications is pretty consistent in the three communities I've worked for for neighbor notifications associated with um, commission permits. Because obviously, remember this is not going. This is a little different. Um, this is a license th thing that's administered through uh, ordinance. Um, and then Bruce is correct. The other thing that what, what the zoning commission does, you put a sign up in front of the property that's visible from the road. Yeah. Well, my experience in California where they didn't have the notification about the short term rental, but notification of a lot of things, they'd send out a map and they'd show the zone, like they'd show the circle over the property and show all the properties that fell into that zone. I think this is one of the most important things, at least to me, with my experience of short-term rentals, when people just didn't know what was going on. So I think we should give a reasonable assessment of neighbors and distance from the house to, that would want to know what's happening if they see something unusual. Um, and I think more than 100 feet might be, especially if it's like a cul-de-sac or, you know, or maybe a property butts up behind. I feel like there should be a zone that's more than 100 feet to notify. Well, I know I, I mentioned this, well, some time ago, but in um, Boulder, Colorado, where I got copies of the materials that describe their short-term rentals program, they, they, the town has a, on their website, there's a page that has a map of the town that's kept up to date where they identify the locations of short-term rentals. Yeah. So you could see it on the map. And does, do they activate when it's actually being used? Like it's got a short-term renter in there now? No, no, that's not- you're just, saying, you're just saying for people who have active permits, essentially. Yes, they have the active permits marked on a map that any anybody who wants to look at it and has a computer can look at it. Well, it's, so Liz, the- mm -hmm. um, how, Tom, uh, excuse me, Mike, excuse me. If you just, if you had, so your, Liz, your point is that contiguous property is not enough. That, you know, I'm, what I'm at, just asking for clarity. I'm not yeah. debating. So contiguous pro is, property is not enough. It's really, you could have, you could have a property next door that's only 50 feet wide uh, and that be enough by being contiguous but the person that's on the 50 who lives 50 51 feet over is still going to be impacted by the experience in their neighborhood of what's going on because of that short-term rental being so close to them so but then that that's that's what you're so the, what, what the number though i think it's imperfect right so contiguous is imperfect uh but a number I don't feel that there's a, I don't know how to solve for what the, whatever that perfect number could be, or that ideal number is from a distance standpoint. Um, could it be house lot? Could it be house lots? Like, could you count 10 houses in each direction or eight houses or? Um, That'd be a lot. Yeah. You know, the, the, the 10 adjoining across the street and on the sides and. 
Not, I, I would I'd recommend a linear distance. Do not go down that, that road. And then that's it's, it's easier to do linear distance. <clears throat> and the applicants so, can, can access that off the GIS system that's available through the public uh, access on the town website. Mm -hmm. If you have half acre lots, you'll get 100 feet will get you to the adjacent in the next one. If you got one acre yeah, lots, I, you only I, get I, two. I think we stick with what is. I think we stick with what is the 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 numeric value that is that is that's in there because that's what's used in that's that's what's used in other aspects of our uh, our, our our town structure. So but is that only the same side of the street? No. So no. So that's that, that's as the crow flies in every direction. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's a, it's going to be a hundred feet radius around the entire parcel, and so you know, let's just say you have a seven acre parcel. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that can spread out. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean by contiguous. I mean, to some extent, it's ultimately it's a radius is contiguous because you can't have an all encompassing. Um, so, all right. Okay, I just as long as I, I I'm not I don't necessarily have a dog in the fight of how it's executed. I will point out that. That's one of the biggest issues when neighbors, you know, especially as crime in the suburbs in Connecticut is increasing, when people see suspicious activity, which means something they don't usually see, you know, people walk a lot in this town, they walk their dogs, they see a van, they don't usually see it in this car, in this yard, or this, and some of that can really be mitigated, like, oh, they have a short term renter in here. So that's the end result that people aren't thinking something weird is happening, aren't calling the police in the middle of the night, which is what happened in my neighborhood because it's a short-term rent rental. So however that's taken care of is my point. Oh, I, I we, that, there, that number is, that's a great, that, 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 that's a, your, your illustration is, is viable, but I don't know mm. what that number is because that could be, it, it's everybody's interpretation. I wish I had known, you know, two, two, two uh, 500 feet's enough for someone, 100 feet's enough for someone, two lots is enough for someone, uh, a mile isn't enough for someone. So, yeah, and maybe maybe part of it is the police will have a list. I don't know. You know. Oh. Uh, well, right, so, uh, uh, I think I think we're just. I, I my 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 preference would be that we stick with the number we have in there. I think we've discussed it a few times, and I think it's contiguous. I use it with contiguous. It's can it, it's in the line. Like I said, it's in it's in it's in line with what other aspects of our governance utilize as a measurement. Okay, and do we have to specify how they're notified? Is it certified mail? Is it dropping off a flyer? There is. We don't have a no, notification. It says notice of the permit shall be mailed by the applicant to the owners of record on all property within 100 feet of the subject property, not fewer than 10 days after application is filed. The applicant okay, shall provide so copies of completed certificate of mailings to the planning department staff for issuance of permit. I was surprised to see that that didn't say not, no, not less than. No, not not less than. Yeah. Not more than, not less than. It's backwards the way it's written there. Um, but I didn't want to take the time to bring yeah. that up. See, but but my, my concern isn't about the application, it's about when it actually happens. Is that something mm -hmm. that we don't think can be done? Because, I mean, the application gets set for six months, then people forget about it, and suddenly something weird's happening. I thought about Liz, notification. Uh, Liz, are you saying that, are, are you asking for notification to it? So notification, so as it's written now, Notification mm -hmm. occurs within 10 days of the filing of the application. Mm -hmm. No rent, no, uh, no rental occurs. Mm -hmm. Six months down the road, the first rental occurs. That at that period, a re-notification should occur or every or a notification upon every rental. I think upon it's every rental, there should be notification. And maybe it's just an email. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. I think once it's on record with the town, any neighbor can check in. Mike Blitton is nodding his head. I think that once they put that notification out there, you know, mm -hmm. somebody at number 10 can call the town and say, what's going on at number 12? 
Yeah, okay. and it may be too onerous. I'm just pointing out the practical effects of when it you know came down in my neighborhood. Before, yeah, I like, get oh, it. So I, I can see the yeah, just, however I, that comes out, you know, whatever. You know. The, I, I can see the practical effects. It could, yeah. The practical effects could be used to, to as as a positive, but it could mm -hmm. also be used as a deterrent. Uh, it, d depending on who's interpreting the the, the need for that. Um, a deterrent to what? Sorry, I'm not understanding. A deterrent to if it becomes onerous, it becomes a so someone might want that in there because it might become a deterrent because it becomes too onerous to do that. And someone say, "This is such an onerous process. I'm not going to. I'm not going to rent my property. I'm going to be I invited. enough other I'm, things in here that made the thing onerous. That I'm going to be in violation. Have hundred days. That's pretty onerous in the first place. I'm going to be in. <laughs> I'm going to be in violation. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to be in violation. So why? I think there's a lot. Again, I think we should go back to the fact okay. that this is an ordinance. Let's let's and I, this is a this is for myself as also listening to my own perspective. This is my own not advice, but my own statement here, guys. This is an ordinance. If we screw this up or we do something that's in that is incongruous to what the intent is, or runs afoul, or crazy, we can adjust it. And yeah, we're we're legislating to two. I think we're get, we're getting we're 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 pulling ourselves in direction again of looking for agreement, which is which is not necessary unif unanimous agreement, which is not necessary, nor is really effective. But we can change this down the road if we if we run afoul or we've advised incorrectly. Yeah, but also remember why this whole thing started in the first place. It's essentially, in a, to boil it down, it was pissed off neighbors who were impacted. That's what started it. These were just happening, you know, and no one was bothered. It was neighbors who were bothered. So I feel like the neighbors are our primary customers here. We, yeah, when we put, we are addressing. I'm not saying you're not doing it. I'm just pointing out that. If and ideally, I think people should be notified on the spot when the new rental is coming up. It's onerous. Okay, I've moved on from that, but I'm pointing out the whole reason we're literally here is neighbors who are impacted. But it will be on record with the town. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they can. Ask. I'm not. I'm not fighting. I'm pointing out that you know whatever we can do to make it so neighbors know what's happening. Then you know. I, I completely agree with you. Yeah. That is why we started this. I yeah. think our job is to create the framework, like Chris was kind of saying, I think you've said that, Liz, I mm -hmm. think our job is to create the framework. If we need to revisit or if the town needs to tweak it, that's fine, but mm -hmm. we're just trying to give that tool ultimately to zoning so that mm -hmm. we have this. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to allow the use, which is not allowed yet. Well, correct. Just, which is occurring anyways. <laughs> <laughs> what so, was that bruce <laughs> minor point but i don't get it um you know this thing of when 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 people are getting a permit when they've applied for a permit we want to make sure that all the the neighbors that are identified get their notification within 10 days of the application the way that it's written now it says that we have to wait 10 days to send out the notice. I don't think that's what we want, but it's just my take on it. The notice should go out within the 10 day period following the application. Is there a comment period? No, it doesn't give that. No, it's, go to, it's gonna be, yeah. It doesn't give yeah. the property owners, the adjacent property owners an option. It's just a notice. It. Right. Just a notice. It's not an opportunity to challenge yeah. the decision being made in the planning department. All right, so we just brought up another con. So that so a whole, another concept has just been into into in brought into the conversation. The the feeling that we, there is do we need to have a comment period as well a response period? Well, unless it's not it's not up to a neighbor to comment. It's Mike. Can you Mike Snotty? Can it's, it's an administrative process. If they de demonstrate right. compliance, they get a permit. So I would say no, no public comment. You're, you're bringing into discretionary uh, views that, that, that will cloud the, the, the whole process up. So 
you check yeah. all the boxes, you show compliance, you get your permit, you behave, you're over your two years while you have your permit, your permit's renewed. If you don't, you don't get to play. I only brought the comment up in response to Bruce saying that you need about the timing of notification, right? That's what you were bringing up, Bruce, that it was inconsistent. I think we can sharpen that. Okay, so I think we can sharpen that yeah. point up, but I don't, yeah. okay. So, well, some might say, well, why send the notice at all unless the permit's been issued? So maybe it should be 10 days following the issuance of a permit because the, the neighbor's not going to have any voice in the decision-making. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to be able to go down there and arm wrestle with Mike over, to, you know, it's just not going to be like that. So, okay. So if you timeline, so, the, so the, the application is a person applies on, on the first of the month, uh, within 10 days, they have to have notified, given notice to whomever is required by the statute within 10 days, the, the ordinance, correct? That's, and that's a gist of, yeah. Yeah, and then, I, I'm gonna get into it, but they can't rent, they, their first rental cannot incept until after that 10 day period. Also, correct? Oh, I don't know. Oh. I believe it's, they have the 10 days to submit the the, like the mailings and then planning staff will do their administrative stuff and fill the permit. They can't rent until they have the permit. That could happen the 11th day after the mailings or it could happen if the planning department's super busy a week later. It would be kind of like a checklist on the permit form. Okay, so like then you, do you put it you know, to, in, in, in order for a in order for a, a, a short-term rental permit to be approved, proof of no, proof of notification effort must occur within ten days. Effort or success? Yeah, I'm sorry. When you're using the word effort, I, I think there should be definite success. The notification. I, I don't know that we can. You, you, that, that's the. That's a. I was just thinking about that too, Liz, but then how do you, yeah. a person could say forever, you could have a neighbor who said, I, I didn't get yeah, this. I didn't get this. I didn't get all this. All we have to say this. is that they have to achieve compliance with the buff. You know, we've got the effort described there. It's right. Send them a note. Right. Send them a certified. The so that's what I want first to move. class mail. Hi and, team. And, Unfortunately, I have to go to another meeting. Yeah. So my recommendation would be for Bruce to send any, you know, any tweaks notifications to Mike and Tom. And I would recommend forwarding this framework that we have to Board of Selectmen for their review. Okay. Thanks, Jackie. But I, I really, I feel like I've, I've done all I'm gonna do. Um, you know, <laughs> and I, I had said what I had to say, I'm done. For now. Well, I think it'd be good to get another copy of, like, to get the updated copy and review oh, it. Oh, we need a, this document just you. needs to be, Not just you know, you. a final draft. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, 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 Bruce, though, I have a, I have a, um, an issue, though, with what you just stated, the, because we will get back into where we are today, where we started today, and where we had yeah previous meetings, if your concerns aren't addressed, then they won't be addressed at the next meeting and they won't be addressed at the following one either. If th th this will continue to yeah. go on. Yeah, I know. So, in, so at some point, the, the, you, have to you have to retract your, I would think you'd have to retract your, your request that these points be addressed they were addressed. because well not the but the your very your second point has not been addressed what was that when i well i'm, I'm assuming oh if it's so not, go 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 back to going back to owner occupied yeah. primary residence that has not been in your mind that has not been addressed well i've addressed it if it doesn't result in a change in that document then 
I'm not going to agree that the document is as good as it could have been because it, it's not. But I will agree that I, I had an opportunity to explain my concern to the whole committee and no, you know, there wasn't a sufficient level of concern to cause a change. But everybody understood what I was trying to draw attention to. Well, I, I think this concern, and we're, I thought we were going to try to get it out, that it's not going to say primary or occupant, owner-occupant, right? No, and this is, he's talking about the thing with the six months, what are the 12 months, uh, under oh. days, just okay. as an illustration. But uh, mm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, you know, if you want to, well, I don't, there, there's not much informality. Uh, I mean, this, this whole thing is more formal than I thought when I volunteered to be on it, but um, you know, I, I, I would certainly participate in whatever you want to do in terms of another review, uh, but I don't want to write the document. We have staff to, to do that stuff. I'm a volunteer, and I don't want to volunteer to replace somebody, somebody's job. Okay, well, I'm, so, so from my perspective, the, the changes that were noted today, and I agree with that yeah. we can make some of those modifications, um, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to request that we re redraft language as it relates to your perspective, um, because I think it's fine, unless the because the the, the staff is the staff is the staff has put forward the language that they feel is responsible is appropriate. So having them change it with, without your, your per, you know, the, 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 the wording or the perspective that you want is, it's not their job. Okay, well that does it. So I would- You're the willing. chairman, Chris, and if you think it's not their job to write the document, then, no, what I'm saying is that I also don't the, agree with that. So, you know, they've they've written they've written the document and you said that in a, oh, I asked you, I said I would consider I, I'll, I'll consider keeping it open if you would push forward language that you believe is how it would how it make how it would bring you comfort or would satisfy your need. But I think there continue staff's continuing effort to try to interpret your concern is not an efficient way of to do this that's that's my point hmm. well I, I guess on the one hand i'm not trying to be a smart ass chris but we've just had more than an hour if mike or tom had questions about what i was trying to say or you did you just ask me uh, you don't have to just leave it for, you know, next week or next month when I send something in in writing. Um, just ask me. But um, I, are you are you you're trying to. Well, well you what, know, I, what, what I'm trying to do is what I'm the, trying the next document is the final document then. Well, so what, what I'm trying to do, it. what I'm trying to do is Jackie put forward. Um, she put forward a, a request and a, she put forward a direction. And I'm trying to balance that direction with what is what were concerns that you raised that other committee members also I, I sensed thought were thought were, were thought provoking, okay? And I want to have, I want there to be an opportunity for those to be responded to. If I take Jackie's approach your requests don't get responded to. Your thoughts don't get responded to. If we, and if, but if I don't get, if I don't get, if I, I feel that the best way for your responses to be responded to is for you to put forth how you believe, because you, you're, the words that I heard you use to say, you're not comfortable, you don't understand, they don't, they're worded, they're worded backwards or they're in their incongruous. That's sort of what I'm recalling. So to me, 
I feel the best way to get that responded to would be for you to push forward the way that they would satisfy. Otherwise, staff is going to, con staff is sitting on a document that they feel is the correct document. And so that's, uh, so, uh, so if there's any, so someone else respond to that or not, we can, we'll, 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 we'll can close it at, at with what is Jackie's, Jackie's approach. I guess my comment was I had made some things that I thought comments on unclear language that haven't been discussed and I haven't gotten any information back. I don't see any changes. So I guess I'll just assume that staff has concluded that the language was clear and that is that, is that how we're stating it? Because I'm not quite sure how to go about resolving if you, if you have a, an issue which you think should be at least discussed. And these aren't, in my mind, I didn't think it was anything that was um, changing the document or the purpose of it. It was just trying to clarify the language because it, I, I, I live by a lot of ordinances in the construction industry. And when you come across something that isn't clear, it just makes things muddled. Sometimes it's just easy to make a quick change and so it's clear to everybody. Okay, uh, Tom, are there changes to take back uh, for, for today? Like what we've discussed about, I mean, we can definitely, Mike and I, can, Mike, Henry and I, we can meet and update as what was discussed or try to update. Um, but I think you touched on it, it is us interpreting those changes versus seeing what the group wants and then, which would be easier and then having staff meet to discuss the viability yeah, because okay. to touch on yours, Ron, like Mike and I did meet and some of them were, we did with like the grammar and all that. And some of them, we just kind of discussed on the viability and how the document flows was left how it is. Okay. So okay. your, your notes were discussed. Okay. Thank you. I wasn't aware of that. So, as long so as I know yeah, I, yeah. I think that's a good point to bring up because we, sometimes we bring stuff up and you think, oh, did it get addressed? And we just, and it, they decide not to, or it didn't, it got missed. Yeah, and, and yeah. Bruce, you may not agree with my statement. But I, I, I agree with it and I stand by it, that it's not their job. We, we, we have had multiple meetings, right? Where multiple opinions have been expressed, multiple ideas have been expressed. And I'm sure that the, the st I am confident that staff has met multiple times subsequently to adjust this document. But at some point, I'm gonna say that it's not their job to continue to try to interpret what all of our, our what of our concerns are and our jobs because it's just inefficient and it's, and, it's, and it's gonna to continue to spin us down the road. So I stand by that statement and I stand by that, but I am still respectful of what your concerns are and I believe the best way to get them efficiently answered or addressed, and sure they are, is that for you or for any of us to craft or correct what they feel needs to be corrected so that staff can then look at them and say, I do, now I understand what you're, you're asking for. I will put it in there. We will put it in there and collectively agree to it or we won't. Well, we don't see the world the same way, Chris. What a surprise. But <laughs> I think, though, as I said earlier, I, you know, even with the, the letter from Bob DiCrescenzo, which I greatly appreciate after a couple months now, it's a nice thing to see that uh, he did think enough of us to get back to us. But more importantly, um, uh, I, I just feel like, you know, I've, I've said what I have to say. Okay, so so then, yeah. um, and can you, Tom? I've had enough opportunity, but I thought I was going to have opportunity to consider the material in not only the letter from De Crescenzo, but to integrate some of that with the um, August sixth packet, which I didn't get. I never have seen the comments from from um, Maria, but I'm. 
sort of relying on what other people said, but I, I had time to submit something, but that time was eaten up by the failure to get the material to me in a reasonable time before the meeting. I thought it was a great thing at our last meeting when you said you're not gonna schedule another meeting until those, that those materials are in the hands of the commission committee members. And, and there's no doubt that's what you said, Chris. I've, I've watched that meeting again twice. So, um, you know, we all have our disappointments. And I think, you know, we go on. And I think that the town is better for the effort, even if it's like they say about making hot dogs. You don't want to watch people making hot dogs, but they're good. And so this process hasn't been a thing of beauty either, but it's, it's gotten us here. Okay, I, I, I eloquently said, uh, thank you. So then for folks, let's put this, let, then let's adopt, let's, let's hope that, let's hope that staff does what I think they've been doing all, continues to do what they've been doing all along, which is incorporate, have discussions, incorporate the comments that we've made today into those discussions, make changes that they feel are, are appropriate and are effective, not make changes they don't feel are appropriate and effective, draft, draft that ordinance and send it to the board for review, okay? Can I add one gotta, thing, Chris? Can, can we look at this and say, we've answered the question or tried to, or solve the problem, or tried to, of the reason we were brought together in the first place. Because it's been such a long time. Sometimes in, different, in the process, you lose sight of why you were there. So. Well, that's a statement. That's a statement, Liz, that will be made at, at the Board of Selectmen meeting when the, when the, when the ordinance is presented. Um, so are you, are you asking for us to, are you asking for it to be that question to be posed prior well, to that? Well, what? right now, as we're quote unquote, maybe passing it off, did we do what we were asked to do? I think I, I, I would say so, from my position, we, there, we were, we were asked to, we don't, we have, we, have, we had short-term rentals occurring in the town of Simsbury. That's, that's, that's a fact. Um, we did not have an ordinance regulating short-term rentals. That's a fact. And we had residents who came to us describing experiences where they were in, negatively impacted because of those two, because of those two converging facts, which are re rentals occurring, no ordinance existing. And we, con we convened a group and we've established guidelines, which we hope give both residents and owners of short-term rental, potential short-term rentals, an understanding of how the town responds to short-term rentals, the existence of short-term rentals. Uh, that, that's how I would frame it. So I, I, I believe we've in the affirmative, we've done what we've done why we originally came together. It may not be, it may not fix the problem or address each con potential mm -hmm. pitfall yeah. of short-term rentals, mm -hmm. but, it, but it, it, it provides the ordinance which was lacking initially. Okay, I think that's the biggest part of the whole thing. Do we do what we're supposed to do? Yeah, it seems like it, I guess. Yeah. Right. I would agree, I would agree that. So, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to ask that uh, Tom and Mike and Henry and other staff incorporate our latest, this latest round of discussions, and then push the ordinance 
to the board for consideration. Okay, Tom. Yep, we can do that. And just the, okay. so the process is we'll put it toward the board so they can discuss it and then they would have to schedule a public hearing. Um, and then we have to follow those timelines before it can even get like approved final by the board of selectmen. So it'll be correct. It'll invite public comment at that part too. Correct. I would just ask that the committee members be uh, sent a copy of the material going to the board of selectmen as it re it's our work, right? And also a uh, notice of when that meeting is with the public hearing and the discussion of the board of selectmen. It, yes, that, I mean, I, that, that's an absolute. Okay. That's an absolute. And uh, that would, uh, I would, if I'm correct with uh, statute, Tom, that would be no sooner than the meeting that it, the meeting that it, that it uh, would be presented at could be no sooner than the BOS meeting on the 18th. Is that correct? Hold on. Um, so Two we can actually, calendars. If, if Mike and I can meet today, we can get it to at least the Board of Selectmen for their meeting on Monday to then at least initially discuss and then schedule a public hearing. And yeah, but that's not going to yeah, okay. And then right. the public hearing would be sometime in October, yeah. either at your first meeting, which I believe is the thirteenth, because it's a Wednesday. Because of oh, that's a weird. Um, that's the weird. That's the weird. Yeah, uh, Wednesday. Or it okay. would be the second meeting in October, depending on what the board, I guess, chooses to do. Um, but it's it's feasibly it's not going to be done by this week. I don't think for next one for next Mondays. Would you say? Uh, it depends on Mike's schedule the rest of the day. If he can uh, meet, we can sit down and certainly take all the comments and add them in. Um, but I'm just what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give that. Bruce. I'm trying to give Bruce a realistic. Well, that's okay. You don't have to give me an estimate when the dates are set. I think. Well, that, but but but, but like why, if I can give you a realistic, then we can know to look for, and then, um, and then not run, you know, not run into a situation where we don't feel like there's uh, adequate notice and consideration of in time to digest the document. That's all. I'm trying to respective of that. If that. If that has been a, a, a feeling or a trend in the past, that's all. Okay, so Tom, so uh, so the 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 let's just say that this gets prepared to be sent to the board of selectmen for the meeting. Um, or the target would be not this Monday. Um, yeah, we had initially put a temporary hold to see if we could get it turned around for Monday. Um, just kind of started preparing the back end stuff. But if you think it's not ready, we can always push to the, sec the first meeting of October as the one to the board to first receive it and then schedule the public hearing. And then whatever that timeline is for that. I don't know when that I'm just be. trying to be, well, listen, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, I'm just trying to be respect, respectful of Bruce's experience to this point. Um, and it's not, I don't know that whether it is, I, I don't, I, I don't want there to be a feeling that this is rushed to the board for Monday. That's all. Okay. Yeah, we can certainly kind of take staff time to meet and all that um, for the October meeting. Uh, okay, fair enough. Is it, is it, 
Bruce, you good with that? And that could give that could give the work group if you have any final wording recommendations things that you want us forward. to consider. Yeah. yeah, to send them to us as soon as you can. And who who are what's the definition of us if we see something? You and who? Mike, it's, me, Henry, Mike, Mike, staff. Yeah. Okay. Staff. Got it. So what I would suggest is that what I would ask is that if if the committee has recommended wording to be incorporated, not suggestions to be considered, because we're past that, recommended wording to be considered that would aid town staff in achieving a document that is more, more focused or more effective, that they provide that information to, they provide those recommendations to the staff by, the, by next Wednesday, give them seven days, which then will allow them, which would allow that document to be prepared and sent to the board of selectmen which would allow that document to be finalized sent to this group and sent to the board of selectmen in preparation for the meeting that occurs on the 13th of october okay okay with me yeah Great. All right. Uh, agenda uh, minutes from last meeting. Any any significant errors that were noted in there? Or Chris, I, I read the minutes and I, I think they were satisfactory and and moved that we adopt them as they were submitted. Thank you. Uh, all right. I appreciate everybody's attendance this morning. It did run long. Um, and good conversation. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll adjourn this meeting and uh, we'll look forward to, uh, again, we'll look forward to the, the, the ordinance drafted up by uh, staff uh, in, in preparation for the, for the meeting on, for the meet on the 13th of October. So thank you guys. Have a great rest of your day.